The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Chapter 19, The Goldilocks Rule, How to Stay Motivated in Life and Work. Well, last video, we talked about the truth about talent, uh, genetics, how do we create the games and play the games in life with the odds are stacked in our favor, find games and habits and an ultimate purpose in life where we don't have just have to pick the linear path that people tell us. We can create our own game. We can create our own path by a combination of different skill sets that we are curious and good at and interested in. So if you struggling with that, go watch that last video. But for now, we're going to get into this one. The second last chapter of this book, Atomic Habits. So to maintain the sustainability of habits for most people, they need to work on tasks that are manageable on the difficulty scale. It can't be too hard or too easy. And this is going to be different for everybody because what's hard for me may not be hard for you. You don't want to play against professional because you will get beat every time and you don't want to play against a kid because you'll win every time. You need to find the optimal zone for challenge and discomfort. And this is going to scale to your relative level of skill and aptitude at this current time. A mistake I made when I was younger is I didn't, in my pursuit of being the most elite basketball athlete I could be, I did not expose myself to this optimal zone of challenge and discomfort. I played a lot, trained a lot of times by myself, Kobe Bryant style, eight hours in the gym. But what I missed out on is what Kobe already did. He would have tr he trained and competed against a lot of people better than him, scrimmaged against a lot of people, getting real experience in a real environment. The real environment is not by yourself. You have 10 people on a court and you're one of them. You got to learn how to optimize for that. So I didn't optimize for that. I didn't optimize for playing against people who were better than me enough. So the Goldilocks rule states that humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities. Not too hard, not too easy, just right. Like the three little bears. Soup's just right. But people can't, can, can far exceed this through sheer mental will, discipline, and mental tough, toughness. Like, they can. They, they, they can push through these uh, perceived barriers of difficulty. We can do things well above our perceived expectations and abilities. Look at the Jocko Willings, David Goggins, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Kims of the world, okay? You don't need to stay in this perfect optimal zone. However, for most people, establishing basic habits, we just want to start with just let's cover the 80-20 of people. We're not Jocko Goggins and, uh, and Johnny Kims. They're, they're the top 1%. Let's talk for the majority. So when starting a new habit, it's important to make the behavior easy to implement so you can perform it even when the conditions aren't right. If your workout regime requires all these different pieces of equipment and you don't have contingency plans for if you don't have that equipment, like what most people have been thrown into over the last nearly two years, if you believe it, a lot of people haven't had access to gyms or the same amount of food and opportunities and business opportunities or people, or clients. All right, a lot of people, they, they, they've kind of let themselves go. You, 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 the bar was set. If, if this, if these conditions aren't set, I don't do behavior, but that's not the way we should think about it. If these conditions aren't set, I enter contingency plan A. If contingency plan A is not possible, B, C, D. If I'm on an airplane, there's, there's E, right? You put me in a cell and you give me nothing. I got you. I know what to do. I know how to keep my mind and body in check and focus. Do you know what to do? If they take away everything from you, what are you going to do? Who's going to show up? Who do you want to be? You're going to give up? You're just going to say, ah, I can't do it because they took away. I, could, like, I couldn't go outside. That's real for some people. They could not even go outside, let alone go to a, a gym or to nature. So we want to have conditions and contingency plans for when the behavior, when the environment isn't right. You don't need to work out for 60 minutes. You don't need to have, if you don't have this ingredient to cook with, what are you going to do? You're going to substitute. What are you going to, just not going to eat? No, you're going to find a substitute. So you find a substitute for the other habits in your life that are a bit less gluttonous. You want to work out every day 15 minutes? You don't have equipment? Damn it, I can't go, can't train. Ah, running shoes, they broke. Ah, damn it. Don't run. Cycle. Row. Hell, uh, body weight, star jump. Bounding, jumping, sprinting, 
Some people won't sprint barefoot. Go in the grass. Go in the dirt. You pick things that don't require the equipment. You can do anywhere. The, the main thing here is contingency plans. Think about it. It's going to happen. You're going to be in of time. I'm in it right now. Gyms are closed. Again. I've got my contingency plans. I've made my investments. A lot of money. Into the, into the ability to continue doing what I'm doing to keep my body and mind in check. Because I knew these days were coming. Once I saw it once, I'm like, we got to prepare. This time has highlighted the weaknesses and flaws in our systems and in myself. And so I've created contingency. But what if there's no power? What if there's no water? What are you going to do? What if you t we take for granted these lights come on when we turn them on, but one day they won't? Whether it's because of natural disaster, terrorist activity, whether it's because of uh, human incompetence. But let's get back to it. Finishing off. How to stay focused when you get bored working on your goals. This whole word boredom kills me. I used to feel bored when I was a kid. Now there's not a second I'm bored. If you have, you have to ask yourself, what, like, what are you curious at? What do you want? Your actions should be driven towards what you want to do. And if you're bored, that's an opportunity to sit with your boredom, reflect, meditate, just have some time to reflect. It's also time to develop yourself, to do things you wouldn't ordinarily make the time to do. Read, learn, do things to support your own nourishment and development. There's unlimited things you can do. Pursue things that you've been in the back of your mind, but you just haven't really had the courage or you made the excuses to, to do. That's what can fill your boredom. Successful people feel a similar lack of motivation. The difference in those people, still, they still move and take action to do the thing they plan to do instead of, instead of not in spite of how they're feeling. So the people don't let the, the boredom or the lack of motivation stop them. They do it in spite of it. Boredom is a threat to consistency and success because the outcome and routine becomes expected. But you must befriend this process instead of always seeking something novel and new and sexy, hoping the next new shiny strategy comes along to excite you. You must befriend boredom. Men desire novel, uh, novelty to such an extent that those who are doing well wish for change as much as those who are doing badly. Machiavelli. One more time. Men desire novelty to such an extent that those who are doing well wish for change as much as those who are doing badly. Even when we're doing well, we wish for change. We get bored with our own success. What does that say about us? Perhaps this is why addictions always center around novelty. Porn, video games, junk, fast food, clothing, consumerism, gambling. There's something primitive inside of us that is being turned on by these pleasure centers being activated by these novel activities. But there's a sweet spot for desire. You need just enough winning to experience satisfaction and just enough wanting, challenge, or discomfort to experience desire. Because that challenge gives you a little bit of desire and grit to just keep going. But if you're constantly winning, you're not going to... If I'm winning every single game, let's say I'm playing 2K, NBA 2K, you know, something, something. I'm playing a video game. I'm playing, I'm playing real, real life sport and I'm winning every game. My desire to, this is why cheat codes are only fun for like half an hour or an hour. Unless the game is like really well made where you can still kind of get challenged through even cheat codes. But, it, and it's why the difficulty in game levels is really going to dissuade or encourage certain people depending on their skill set and personality. You're not, like, this is, like, that's why they give you options. Easy, normal, hard, very hard, insane, right? There's different levels in like video games you can play. And you think about that, it's like, oh, what? oh, if, if everybody selected very hard, there's only going to be a very small selection of people who are going to have the ability to stick with something like that or have the skill to do it because video games, uh, they do have skill involved as much as people want to admonish them um, and they can have benefit. But there's going to be a very small selection of people who are going to have the natural characteristics to push past that. Uh, so, you know, Whereas you might get 80, 90% of people who just quit in that very hard setting after half an hour. They're like, man, I can't, I, I can't even get past the first level. Same thing for like a, like, a, like a soccer game. Like you're playing against people who would like just 
two levels above you. Man, I can't even touch the ball without it getting taken away from me. Man, this is no fun. I'm out of here. It's like you need to find the optimal dose for challenge if you're concerned that you might be dissuaded and discouraged by the challenge, particularly if it's a new habit, especially if it's a new habit. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with challenge. Why? Just because you think you're better than you are? You're just going to end up, your ass is going to end up getting, your ego is just going to get a nice beating and pummeling. And you're probably going to end up giving up on it for a little while. Maybe you'll come back to it and realize, okay, I need to peel it back a little bit. I don't need to try and be the best I can be right now. While you gave up for six months and, you know, because it was too challenging because you wanted to just do something a bit above your, beyond your capabilities, the person who picked a little bit lower setting and humbled themselves be like, I ain't shit, man. I ain't, oh, I mean, it's going to take a while. Like martial arts, like you, you can turn up to that class and get pummeled by a bunch of black belts or purple belts, right? And you're a white belt. But this is why they put white belts with white belts or white belts with the, with the blue belt or the person just slightly above you and you intersperse it. I'm not fighting every time with the blue belt or the purple belt. I might get one experience or two experiences per week and the rest of the time I'm with the white belt. But that blue belt experience, that purple belt experience, that gives me a hunger. It's like, oh man, look what I could do. I'm getting my ass kicked here. But if with enough practice and time, I could get there. I could just, I could get to the point where I'm... I'm good enough to just hang with them a little more. And you build and you build and you build. But you don't spend all of your time in the white belt. And you don't spend all of your time in the purple or black belt. It's, it's a combination. It's an optimal combination depending on your, your tenacity, your ability, uh, your proclivity to keep pushing through so you, can, uh, so you can optimize the desire to keep going. And you can think about this for when you challenge people, when you're working with people, when you're guiding people through challenges. You don't want to make it too challenging, but you don't want to make it too easy. You want to intersperse. It's like toggling back and forth. You need just enough winning to experience satisfaction and just enough wanting and challenge to experience desire. You know, if you only do the work when it's convenient or exciting or you feel good, you're only going to do the work a quarter of the time, half the time. And this is the recipe for mediocrity. This is the recipe for very little progress. What am I going to do? I'm gonna, I might, I might, what if I just did like the first three chapters of this book? Of all the books. My channel... This, this business would be one twentieth of what it is now in size. What if I just decided to train on the days I felt good? All the days I really, I just wanted to. I'm not going to get the outcomes that I want, but it depends. Maybe you don't want, maybe you don't have certain outcomes. Maybe you're just doing it just, just because it feels good to you. It's okay for a th like to have a habit just for the sake of like, oh, I'm going to do it when I want to do it. Like that's okay to have those habits. But if you have those habits and you have to align your expectations with those types of habits, if the habits are, you can have habits like that. But if those habits have expectations on the back of them, it's like, oh yeah, I want a lot of things from this. Oh, I want to transform myself. I want to get better at this. You can't just turn up to training when you feel like it. You can't just turn up to the yoga class or the dancing class or the piano uh, lesson, you know, just, you know, whenever. You know, you have to have a pre-commitment intention to commit yourself to a consistent plan of action because what... What gets you need consistent, hard, and smart work to get consistent progress. And until you develop a foundation of competency, of skill over years, then you can maybe peel it back and rest on your laurels a bit and take six months off and three months off. I can pick up a basketball now after five, six years of just being obsessed every single day for hours on end. I can pick it up and I still, I still got the, I still got a little bit, you know. I got that motor memory, uh, you know. I have. Uh, still uh, some of that ability left but i couldn't do that if i just spent six months playing and then stopped for five years no we would be almost back to square one so the longer you do it the more trained you are at a certain skill the more you can peel it back and take away and kind of take breaks from it but you can't just do things when you feel good if you have expectations of greater accomplishments if you just turn up to work when you feel good you probably wouldn't ever get a promotion you'd probably get fired if a habit and accomplishment is truly important to you, you have to be willing to stick through it, through any mood or feeling. It's not about how you feel. It's about the commitment you made to yourself. And you do understand that if you do something in spite of how you feel, you build a integrity and resolve within you. Because if you can push past and do the thing that you don't want to do right now, consistently every day, what can't you do? Like you build a, that's how you get confident. You wanna know how you get confident? Do things that you don't want to do and you don't feel like doing, but you know are important for you to do. It's not just about, it's not about doing things when you feel like it. It's about showing up and doing things and doing the thing you said you were going to do repeatedly, regardless of how you feel. If you care and desire 
for something greater, for excellence, for just something better in what the field you're operating within. If you don't, that's fine. But if you do, the expectations must match, match the reality of the actions. And that's chapter 19, second last chapter. The next and last chapter, we will go through the downside of habits. Ooh, the downside? Is there a downside? We're going to talk about that in the next chapter. It's probably going to be up by now for most of you. You can watch that. It's a full playlist of all these Atomic Habits videos if you want to see it. And then we're going to cover the conclusion, the secret to long-lasting results within that video as well. So it might be a bit longer. And if you got, yeah, if you guys want to see it, you'll see the full podcast, uh, podcast audio videos on podcast platforms. You'll see most likely, eventually, written versions of all these on my website, alexanderemmanuel.com and medium.com, which I love as a writing platform. If any writers out there, highly recommend medium.com. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications, because even though we're at coming to the tail end of this, I have Sapiens, which is coming out, should be coming out around now, if it's not already out um, on this channel as well. A brief human history of mankind. We're all humans. Probably important to understand a little bit of the history of how we got here and why we are the way we are. I'm just obsessed with understanding us. What makes us us? We've got a human machine from birth to life. We should probably understand how it works. That's what I'm here to understand. Anyway, subscribe, hit the notification so you don't miss any miss out on any of these because I do a book and then I go on a break and then I only do a book and I feel like doing another book. You see the point? I cannot expect this channel to have whatever hundreds of thousands, millions of whatever, if I am not consistent in totality. Now, I have learnt that it is very important when I bring these out to be consistent. When I did the 48 Laws of Power was when I grew the most, the book analysis by Robert Greene. Really highly recommend, one of the best books I've read. I dropped a video every single week for 48 weeks in a row. And I, I, I worked, like that was a time where I could have said, oh, I'm bored, but I dedicated myself towards something, something I'm interested in. And I created that series and I did it every week and it was consistent and people knew when to expect videos from me and they knew, I knew when I was going to release them and I was consistent every week and I didn't expect to grow. I just wanted to share it. But I, this is the same thing here. These are all pre-recorded and batched and then I release them as we go every week. You can expect a new one every week until we're done. Then I'm done. There's not another book coming always at the back end of it. I'm not doing this permanently. Maybe if this channel gets to a place where I can do that, where it's, it gives me more financial security, I can afford to peel back other areas and put more energy into this. Maybe, if I want to. I can hire people to edit. I can, you know, really upgrade the, the quality. But one part of making this more consistent was getting away from being fancy. And you guys have seen in previous videos, I always put things on the screen. Now, it's just about the information. It's about the audio and the information and my commentary. I'm not going to spend another 5 to 20 hours per video because that's not, I can't justify that right now. In the future, I will be hiring someone to do that if this channel grows enough to warrant that. We'll see. But you can see, I, I can't have expectations for this channel to reach hundreds of thousands or a million, whatever, unless I'm being in totality consistent. However, in the micro with these series, I will be consistent because at some point I do care. I do care. Like to say I don't want to grow would be a lie, but it's not a focus. It's not a priority. And if it happens, it happens great. If it doesn't, it doesn't, fine. At the end of the day, I have learned. I have solidified my learnings. I have hopefully maybe given some value to a few people who can live a bit better lives for themselves and the world around them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.